An investing guide, it's all a risk one. Investment Introduction Investing is about using your money to generate money in a passive way. The problem is that everything is a risk. I've watched most episodes of the TV show American Greed. To me, cryptocurrency is stupid because it creates nothing useful except for maybe the ability to transfer money around but there is no government regulated insurance as with banking insurance. If the owners of the Bitcoin websites decided to shut off, all the idiots out there would have no recourse on getting their money back yet they continue to invest in droves. The internet is a big joke as far as investment advice goes. I've seen self-proclaimed investment experts who looked like kids. They have not lived through a regular generational cycle of the stock market. It always crashes big time then the old timers get out while a fresh new generation of naive idiots comes on the scene to give these vultures their hard earned with the promise of easy money. The hipsters hype stocks up every day. That's the job of CNBC, TheFool.com and all investing entities. They need people to invest in the stock market, mutual funds, etc. When the crash hits they say this is a good time to buy. The stock market is always the same cycle. People never learn. It's the lure of easy money. The slicksters can sucker anybody in by lying. The average investor has no legal remedy if some fast talker sleazes you out of your money. Even if you have a so-called contract, they call it a civil matter, not a criminal matter. You sue in civil court, you win, so what? You will never collect that judgment. Jordan Belfour, The Wolf of Wall Street had a big judgment against him yet the last time I heard him talk in an interview he lied and said he owes nothing. Matthew Cox and several other former criminal con artists now have YouTube channels where they interview former criminals. These people are master liars. The YouTube channel CoffeeZilla covers at least a hundred scams. I say the investment theater as with the stock markets worldwide is a manipulation vehicle from a few elitists who control everything like the people who run the world banking system and have appointed themselves the rulers of money, creating it out of nothing, lending it to governments which is totally unnecessary because governments are sovereign which means they have the authority to create their own money but they don't. They instead borrow it from banks, who create it out of nothing through a scam system called fractional reserve banking which is the scam that makes you pay income taxes for life for no good reason except to enrich elitist bankers but I'm not talking about that right now. Investment is about you making money passively by parking it somewhere where someone works with it to make a profit thereby making you a profit as with stocks, bonds, mutual funds, futures, stock options, puts and calls, currency trading, derivatives, packaged monetary instruments. Other creative things crafty con artists think up, just watch American Greed on CNBC or YouTube. The stock market is a predictable scam perpetrated on the people en masse. People make money off it all the time but the game is always the same. Hype, 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 up, 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 crash. Hype, hype, up, up, crash. It took about 15 years for Nasdaq to get back to its year 2000 high of about 4,500 after the crash. The media and the TV networks are all hyping stocks because it's their business to hype stocks. I'm not disputing the fact that an astute investor can pick a few wins here and there but for the most part every stock market is a game run by insiders despite the laws against this. It's a sucker's game. Financial advisors and brokerages get paid regardless of whether stocks go up or down. Churning is when you have a financial advisor who trades your stocks not to make you money but to make him or her money on commissions. Jeff Bezos's Amazon stock rose almost 6,000% since its IPO. It's a fluke. I say the emotional drain of investing in stocks is not worth the risk. Save what money you need, live modestly and enjoy life. I always hear them talk about gold and silver on the right-wing radio networks like Republic and American Free Radio. I think they're fools. If the crap hits the fan as in a doomsday scenario, you can't eat gold just like you can't eat money. The real treasures are in what you do every day, the food you eat and a comfortable bed. Beyond that, almost everything else is capitalist bullshit. 
people underestimate the value of a comfortable bed. In much of the world, people don't sleep in comfort because they either don't have enough heat or air conditioning, there are bugs everywhere some of which cause diseases, loud noises. You have this vision in your mind of paradise so you work your ass to try to achieve some house somewhere that matches this but life is lived in your mind. The material surroundings beyond basic comfort are almost irrelevant except for the weather and a few other things like if you like to swim, you want to be near a lake, if you like to ski, you want to retire near a ski slope, etc. The truth is that for most of us, by the time you retire, you're a limited, boring dud. You can't do hard physical things anymore. Life is generic. It's enough wake up in a comfortable bed, get a cup of coffee then walk the dog without being hassled by anyone. That's as good as life gets after 60 so my advice is be conservative with your money, save it, don't be greedy and enjoy your life. I've watched almost every episode of American Greed and other scam TV shows and I never feel sorry for the investors who got ripped off because they were greedy idiots. Invest with some big discount brokerage with a bank behind it like TD Ameritrade then forget the rest. I used to be on some telemarketing investment mailing list but they don't call much anymore. Just last week, some guy with a foreign accent called me saying he represented some investment company so I told him I invest with TD Ameritrade. They got a bank behind them. Why would I invest with some random voice on the phone? Then I told the guy I watched every episode of American Greed and told him to have a nice day like screw you asshole, do you think I'm an idiot? Don't get sucked into anybody's bullshit. Only give investment money to huge financial companies not some startup you see on some ad somewhere offering 20% returns. All investment except for simple bank accounts are a risk. The investment scheme of the world is a rigged system by insiders to entice the people with stock markets ups and a few big winners in stocks like Amazon, Microsoft, Apple, Google, etc. But it always follows the same cycle. They hype it up. It crashes. They keep hyping it up without shame to make you feel like you're missing out on all those gains then a new generation of young people come of age, invest in the stock market, it goes up and up. It crashes. Many get out. Some are enticed back by the hype but it will crash again. The time it takes to study stocks, mutual funds, or whatever you're investing in is a lot if you plan to make money in an educated way. If you plan to give it up to a financial advisor to do it for you for a fee then I think you're a sucker. I do not trust any of them. They have the perfect business. They make money from your money and never risk or lose a penny but if you lose it all either through churning or the investments go bust, too bad for you and they're usually legally protected. On top of that, if you invest in anything except with the biggest, most established brokerage firms or banks selling mutual funds, you could be dealing with con artists. A lot of them are very slick. Watch those scam greed shows on TV. The easiest way to invest is to open a discount brokerage account, go to the library, look through the last 10 issues of Money Magazine. Make a list of the 5 best stocks or mutual funds then put money into them. I think if you got extra money, the simplest thing is to just save it in cash. With cash, you're protecting it from the government if they want to get you on taxes or if someone wants to sue you. If you travel to a foreign country as a part-time expat retiree, open a bank account there. Get retirement or resident status and put some money there to avoid the tax people in your home country. Other than that, real estate is pretty safe if you buy a house to use as rental income as long as the tenants don't trash it. Or invest in a small business that brings you part-time income like selling spices at the local farmer's market or something. At my age, after all I've seen, I don't trust anyone anymore when it comes it to the business of making money from money. It's all a big piece of crap to me that adds nothing to the progress of the human race. I don't trust any of those phony suckers saying they got the latest tip. Think about it. Anybody that goes into a business that adds nothing positive to life and is based on making money from shuffling paper around is inherently not a good person. Good people do real hardcore things. They don't try to make money by gambling. The emotional toll of any risky investment is too high. I live a simple life. I pay my bills. 
I don't do anything extravagant. That's good enough for me without risking my money because somebody says I can make a lot of money by investing it. What if I lose it all? I'm against investing money in any investment financial instruments but it's the cool thing to do, constantly hyped up every day on the several financial TV and radio networks so I tell you what's going on and keep my nose out of how it's a sucker's game because there are always a few winners like Apple, Amazon, Google and Microsoft stocks so you're entitled to try your luck. It's the same idea as the lottery or Vegas. They tout the few winners but never breathe a word about the many people who have lost loads of money. Investing is very simple concept to learn. Everybody on the outside without insider knowledge presumably including all financial advisors, are at the same level so you don't need to waste money paying for so-called professional advice because the best advice is as easy as reading the latest copy of Money Magazine or the Consumer Reports articles about the best investments in stocks, mutual funds, etc. Financial advisors and the financial services industry are a big scam to me. Most investments aren't guaranteed. This means whatever money you invest, you risk losing it all. Bank accounts, money market accounts and government savings bonds are guaranteed investments. Gold is pretty stable. That's it. Everything else is a risk. They prey on the ignorance of people, pretending that money is a deep, advanced concept. All anyone needs is a bank account to deal with life. If you want to invest in stocks and mutual funds, get a free discount brokerage account to try your luck in stocks for only a few dollars a trade. If you don't know what churning is, you should read this book. It's the simplest scam out there done all the time by unscrupulous so-called financial advisors. If you want to know what stocks or mutual funds to buy, just go to the library or online. Look at the past year issues of Money Magazine or some other investment articles and that's all you need. Your bank probably sells mutual funds so you can keep it simple and buy from them. Watch a few episodes of CNBC's American Greed to realize you can't trust anybody with your money because if you do, they will rip you off one way or another. It might be outright theft or nickel and diming as with churning but it's still theft. This book is about all types of investments I could find. There are probably a million stock and money advice websites out there and a few hundred money books at number 332 or HG 179 to about HG 5155 at the library. If you're really into money, I urge you to go to number 332 at the library and borrow a bunch of those stock advice books there. There are hundreds. It seems like they never end. Every year, some fresh new books come out about the stock market even though there is no new advanced way to buy stocks. Why does anybody want to read a book about money, one of the most boring subjects on the planet? It's simple. It's called reality. If you don't got money, you got nothing. You're going along cruising through life not too concerned about money because you're making a fairly good wage. What happens if you get fired, your company goes bankrupt, you get sick, get into an accident? Your daughter needs to go to an expensive eating disorder clinic to save her life or the world goes into an economic tailspin. How many mortgage or rent payments are you away from being on the street if you got cut off today? Why would any sane person invest their hard-earned money in the stock market or more complex ventures like stock options, rights, or ADAs after seeing how the financial insiders on Wall Street were essentially conducting a loose conspiracy of ripping off honest Americans by constantly pushing them to buy stocks like I see every day on financial networks and on infomercials even when the market goes way down. The stock market is nowhere near as great as it's cracked up to be. All the investing media, stock brokers and investment companies hype it up because they have to, that's their business, to get suckers to get into the game but overall, for most people, the gains aren't all that great and there is a risk of losing a lot of money. It's like the casino. A few flukes win a lot of money, a few knowledgeable people win at poker but by and large, it's only the house that wins the big money all the time like only the insiders of Wall Street. I think buying and managing rental income of good as opposed to slum type real estate is a safe, solid investment and I also feel that the truly wise, enlightened people figure out a way to earn money by doing something they like to do anyway so they start up a small business venture and don't even waste energy and stress on the crapshoot of the stock market.
we should go back to our roots and seriously rethink this matter of investing money in stocks rather than simply being sucked in by all the talking heads on money TV being bullish on the stock market regardless of what's really happening. Most people who get rich will do it through their own efforts by actually doing something useful. They won't do it through the speculation of the stock market which is legal gambling. The other big lie of a capitalist world is that more stuff equals greater happiness. The truth is that beyond what you need, more equals a headache and a hassle in many cases. You don't need all that much to live well plus you're a prime target for crime if you try to show off your conspicuous consumption of luxury goods you don't need. Nobody needs a 5,000 square foot house, especially if it's only a couple with no kids. I saw all these people with big houses feeling sorry for themselves because they took out big mortgages then got stuck when prices fell. It's their own fault. They thought they were hot stuff living in the high class part of town when they bought those big houses they didn't need when they should have bought much smaller ones and they wouldn't have had that headache to deal with. The biggest rules of money are 1. Everything you see on TV is hype. 2. What goes up must come down. 3. Money in the hand is worth more than money on paper. 4. Earning self-respect makes you happier than buying stuff you don't need. In the course of my research, I came across ideas and concepts that are alternative to the mainstream, some of which are illegal, especially some of the parts in the offshore tax havens section. There are probably a million stock and money advice websites out there and a few hundred money books at number 332 or HG 179 to about HG 5155 at the library. If you're really into money, I urge you to go to number 332 at the library and borrow a bunch of those stock advice books there. There are hundreds. It seems like they never end. Every year, some fresh new books come out about the stock market even though there is no new advanced way to buy stocks. It's the same, old common sense info mixed in with the same old uncertainty of stock trading covered over with a good dose of hype. There is no sage that has divine knowledge over anyone else unless he or she has insider knowledge. You only get good by studying the stock market itself day after day. You can't really buy a guidebook because you learn it as you buy stocks and study the market. There are some investment books mixed in with the business books at around number 658.15 or HG4910 at the library. For an in-depth look at corporations, go to number 338 at the library. Consumer education books are at number 640.7 or TX335 at the library. Home economics slash thrift type living books are at number 332.024 or TX326 at the library. Try number 368 or HG8061 for books about insurance. Join Money Magazine's Money Book Club, money.com. If you're interested in how to build a house, even an alternative house, refer to my family and home book or go to number 690-699 at the library. Chapter 1 All investments are risky. Everybody lies about how bullish something is. Let's say I'm an old veteran of the market. I've watched it for a lot of years now. I used to watch the stock shows on TV. I don't anymore but I finally figured it out. All those claims that virtually everyone who is involved in the stock business make including financial planners are lying. Some are being deliberately fraudulent but I suspect most are just spewing the myths they were told like the stock market eventually always goes up. Of course. Over long periods of time the market will rise but will it rise more than keeping your money safe in a savings bond or CD not to mention the risks. The stock market climbs slowly over five years then all the gains are wiped out in a week. That's reality. I still see them hyping stocks up on the money shows. Your best bet is to put your savings in a safe investment, either a savings bond or a rental property then go to the job and business books I've written to figure out either an extra job over your main job now or a way to make some money by doing your own thing. It's the only sure thing. Personally, after watching the markets for about 12 years, I now know everybody in the business lies. There are a lot more losses in the stock market than anybody lets on. Think about the perfect sucker business. A financial advisor makes money when he invests his client's money and it goes up but when it goes down, the client loses. 
he doesn't lose a cent. It's no risk for him. He wins in good times and doesn't lose anything in bad times. A system like that is inherently flawed. There's nothing to stop the greed since they're spending other people's money, not their own. Common Sense Investing 1 For the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. Some people, eager for money, have wandered from the faith and pierced themselves with many griefs. 1 Timothy 6:10. I know of nothing more despicable and pathetic than a man who devotes all the hours of the waking day to the making of money for money's sake. John D. Rockefeller If you can actually count your money then you are not really a rich man. Rich guy There is risk in all investments as Mark Twain observed over a hundred years ago, October. This is one of the peculiar dangerous months to speculate in stocks. The others are July, January, September. April, November, May, March, June, December, August, and February. The pendulum of the world economy therefore the stock market always overswings in its two directions, bear and bull. This is a hard fast rule laid in stone. It will get pretty bad then get a bit better then get really good then go down again. This is partially due to manipulation by world bankers, see relevant section, and partially out of anyone's control. Your job is to see the bear coming and get out before it hits, see the bull coming, ride it until it reaches critical mass then bail out before it swings back to the bear. The safest way is to put it away in a guaranteed investment certificate or a US savings bond and let it compound over the years. Some people don't have the stomach for stocks, even the big, safe stable ones, especially if they have lived through a recession where their savings were trashed. Others say mutual funds are the greatest investment because your risk is diversified but if the stock market goes down as a whole, 95% of the stocks in a mutual fund will go down whereas if you have a good stock, it will weather all storms as some do during bear markets. I have easily scanned at least a hundred books on money and the one constant I have found about them all except for this one is that the authors were all guilty of tunnel vision money babble that is that they complexified the topic and pursuit of money beyond reason to absurdity such that they probably spent a large part of their lives following this very boring subject day by day such as in watching their investments via the stock market but more than that, they lost themselves as human beings. By wasting their valuable lives way over analyzing the stock market and other investments with their macro theories that average Joe can't relate to nor wants to waste time on because it's useless. They're all there trying to tell some guy with a modest amount of money to waste his time watching for this trend and when that happens buy these kinds of stocks, advice that's so general and ivory tower that average Joe can't relate and doesn't want to. They're talking about all these obscure indexes, the world economy and the Federal Reserve Board manipulating interest rates while average Joe has got about $50,000 saved up and can afford maybe 5 to 10 stocks so none of this stuff relates. It's simple. You just pick good stocks in either stable industries or stable companies in growth industries, buy them and forget about them for the next few years. Spending your time obsessing over the stock market is the biggest waste of life around. Jesus threw the money changers out of the temple, Henry David Thoreau said a man shouldn't need more than his ten fingers to count his money transactions on and should be able to keep his accounts on his thumbnail. Some people see the entire business of making money with money as morally wrong because it creates nothing of value and makes money at the expense of other people which is not really true because you are actually investing in corporations and putting faith in their potential which signifies risk. When times are good, everybody wins and nobody loses but when times are bad, everybody loses. First off, Investing is gambling albeit intelligent gambling if you are educated about it so listen to no one but your own research. Right off the bat, I'm going to tell you that I studied all the major research methods and read a lot of books and magazines about investing and the bottom line is that beyond a certain elementary understanding of the system, nobody knows anything more than anybody else unless they have a piece of insider knowledge. Don't trust any experts or method wholeheartedly. I started out in mutual funds which are really WIMP investments, moved into stocks for better gains, got into tech stocks realized they could be risky so I focused only on stable infrastructure stocks. When the market crashes or goes through the proverbial correction, tech stocks always lose big time but recover quickly. You have to have patience with stocks, 
buy several good ones and sit on them. Beyond tech stocks, for security's sake, I invest in the slow, dull stable retail stocks like Home Depot, Walmart, Kmart, Charles Schwab, etc. The only way to pick a winner is to look at a company for what it really is, a competing business in a specific industry. Look at it as a whole, not from the perspective of the numbers game, i.e., the P-ES, the betas, etc. This is my philosophy for picking stocks and my slant in this book. I know a day trader who doesn't give a damn about anything but the graph. As long as it's going up, he holds. When it slips for that first one-fourth, he sells. The bottom line is really the graph, does it keep going up, that s all you really need to know. For money books, you will find a whole slew at number 332 of the library or via Money Magazine's Money Book Club. The world is now changing so fast that the rules of the past don't apply. The only way to win is via good, current research. You need good print media, good business TV and good internet websites but be wary of the source of any information. If the source of what's being hyped is the owner or broker, don't listen too much. Listen to objective information only. I read about one report about a roller skate company doing great but that was in the late summer. By the dead of winter, the stocks were way down because nobody roller skates in the winter. You have to watch everything. Information changes so fast that in order to make money, you have to be there to find the gem in an obscure place before it hits the mainstream then it's too late because all the sheeple will be taking their crack at this information which is by then obsolete and the overinflated stock will probably crash a bit in due time. If it's on the cover of Kiplinger's or Barron's, forget it. The window of opportunity is over but since many people just gloss over the info on the inside, there's some good stuff there. If you plan to be a serious investor, get on the internet, get a link with one good near real-time stock quote service, often the free ones you get with your account are good enough, pick your favorite stocks then study them regularly. I know one guy who has four favorite stocks that often fluctuate by a few bucks so he buys 1,000 shares then sells a bit later when it goes up by a buck to make a 1,000 bucks for the day but he loses sometimes too. In today's age, only current knowledge is power. Anything over a month old is passé. It's all about timing. Don't spread yourself too thin trying to learn about everything. Pick a few small areas slash companies and stick with that. Remember. Despite all the forecasts, nobody has a crystal ball. There will always be nasty surprises and unforeseen events. Long shots are almost always lost shots. I get so much investment stuff in the mail that I barely read it anymore. I own about a dozen stocks and that's it. I don't waste much time on it. For some with disposable money, investing's a game. For others, it's a calculated risk to make profits to survive financially. The most basic rule of all is that the stock market is an animal in and of itself that's largely swayed by the emotional whims of the people involved. If something goes bad on the economic forefront, there's a ripple effect that could be compounded then suddenly investors get nervous, everybody sells and you lose. Expect to lose at certain times. Investing is not really a short-term venture. It's better geared for those who put it away for the long term. Investing becomes detrimental when you spend all your free time reading the stock reports and watching the money shows on TV. Not only is it downright boring, there is something inherently wrong with giving up your life to the pursuit of money. Fully 97% of the population hates the topic of money because it's a very boring subject within itself so if you're new to the trade, do your learning in the right places and don't fall prey to all the TV radio shows and print out there all seemingly providing expert advice on how to invest your money. Once you learn the basic framework, everybody's in the same boat, there are no experts without inside knowledge, it's a matter of doing current research to find the best deals which you must constantly do to win. Furthermore, the topic of money is so broad and wide that there are no real total experts in the field. The best any expert can do is to know about a few subtopics. Nobody can possibly keep up with it all. It takes constant reading and refreshing the mind. Keep it simple. Don't get taken in by all the complicated literature out there. 
Investing is very simple when you get right down to it and you should keep it that way. It's never too late to make money. Simply by moving your money out of a 5% bank CD into a half-decent mutual fund of which there are many, you will go up to an easy 20% return, probably more. It's your money, don't part with it lightly. Watch TV shows like the ones on the CNBC network, the PBS Nightly Business and Wall Street Weekly Report on Friday nights if you want but don't get too addicted. Life was meant to be lived, not to be confused with a bunch of arbitrary numbers so keep it all in perspective. Anytime I ever get a hot tip from a person, especially someone I don't know too well, I know it will be a dud. Don't go for hot tips from anyone as I will explain later about scam companies. Avoid risky investments. Unless you're an expert, stay away from futures trading, stock options and stock warrants. The rules of investment are basic. Don't put all your eggs in one basket meaning diversify. Diversify. Past performance of any investment is all you have but it's not carved in stone. Nobody really knows the future so don't fall prey to the delusion that you are special and you can outguess the market. Think long term. Don't get into it as a battle to fight every day and clog your mind with all that boring stuff. Common sense investing too. There is no one surefire way to make big money in investing, there are many ways just as there are many ways to lose money. There is really no easy way to be a consistent winner on Wall Street. There are a few flukes here and there but everybody who makes it big has put in the time and sweat, research, homework, call it what you will but the big winners love the process and often spend endless hours studying stocks. You have to pay the price if you want to earn the bucks. Nobody is right all the time. Expect to lose money. The winners know they'll lose but their winners outweigh the losers. The platinum rule of investing is to start now while you're young put the money away and let it compound while you add to it. That's the way most millionaires accumulate their wealth, over time. Remember that inflation and taxes will always take a cut of your money. When it gets right down to it, investing is not rocket science. It's all very basic. Don't get emotionally involved. Be disciplined. If things aren't going your way, don't hang on, get rid of it. This is a tough pill to swallow. I bought a tech stock at the end of its hype right when competing companies were catching up so my stock went way down, I hung on for about a year but it never really got better so I dumped it at a loss. You will always win some and lose in at least one. Your hope is that the other gains will outweigh your loss. I had all the good research but I still lost. The company was once a darling but then it slipped just as fast. I'm warning you, despite the greatest research you can't predict the future. Something will happen, you will lose. Be ready for it and don't get all bent out of shape when it happens. Accept it and keep moving. As for my own life story, I was a generic dummy keeping my money in CDs at the bank until I decided to get real at about the age of 30 and educate myself. What I did was study some books from the number 332 section at the library, got some current books from Money Magazine's book club and went to the magazines at the library like Money, Kiplinger's, Forbes, Success, Inc., Mutual Funds, etc. For current, specific information. I also checked out some of the newspapers like Wall Street Journal, Investors Business Daily, Barron's, USA Today, etc. And today, there are plenty of sites on the internet. I sent away for a few free things, called some toll-free numbers and suddenly, I found myself on a bunch of mailing lists getting all kinds of investment information. For the first year, I put my money into mutual funds and blue chip stocks and gradually learned about the investment world casually by reading magazines, a few more books, checking out the internet and watching haphazardly on TV. After about a year, I decided to go for bigger gains so I focused on stocks particularly tech stocks where most of my money is now. I got away from mutual funds because I realized that no matter what, you're always paying a fee whether it be for front load, back load, no load, 12, B, 1 fees or whatever. The fact is that fund managers get paid regardless of whether the fund goes up or down and I trust my own judgment better than them so for me, 
the golden rule is as you get more knowledgeable, focus on getting out of funds to seek out good stocks to invest in that could pay off big time. The way I look for winner stocks is simply to go to places where somebody else has already done all the work. I just go to the major money newspapers and magazines and look for the ranking lists like top stocks this month, past three months, of the Dow Jones, S&P, etc. Just look through the lists that rank the top performers. Pick the top few and research them. Business Week, Forbes and all the financial newspapers regularly rank companies and stocks. The easiest way to do research is on the internet. You can get corporate filings there plus do searches with the company name to see what you can come up with. Of course, if a company has been ranked in the top 5, you can rest assured that the rest of the mainstream knows about it and have already invested mightily in it. Don't feel bad though. Know that a winning company usually goes on a run for at least 3 years and then stabilizes because the competition catches up by then, however, a great company can keep going and never stop. For me, because I'm lazy, I simply invest in the top performing stocks on the top performing lists but the true gem is the unknown, obscure, upstart company that you happen to run across via research. Imagine if you had the intelligence to come on to Apple or Microsoft years ago when they were just starting out. You have to have intelligence but at the same time be wary of scams like wireless cable or other useless, fancy sounding technology. If you're in for the long haul and don't like to bother researching stocks at all, pick some good stock mutual funds and keep your money there, it's probably the simplest, hassle-free, safest, although there is still risk, way to go. Once your fees are paid and you're in a large family, you can switch from fund to fund for just a nominal fee. Another simple rule I live by is the size of the company. If the company is too big, although stable, the profits are meted out to more people, hence, the less likelihood of making a good killing so if a company has over about 12,000 employees, it's too big to really get a good return although some upstarts which take off are exceptions to the rule. All I do now is check out the value line investment survey at the library, send for free investment newsletters by just asking for a sample copy before I subscribe which I never do scan the internet a bit and only own a few investment books geared to tech stocks. Medical and banks are always good unless the company screws up bad. Of all the investment newsletters, I trust Standard & Poor's Outlook the most because they're a long time, established, objective company. It always comes down to your tolerance for risk. Remember that all investments in stocks are risky, mid-caps more so than blue chips because the potential payoff is bigger. All risk is directly proportional to potential for gains. Although mutual funds are safer than stocks because of their diversified portfolios, I personally don't go for them much anymore because some of them do lose money and the potential for gains is peanuts next to a few good stocks so if you know where to go for good, current information like I outline in this book, you can find several good stocks and stick with them and if you want to be really frugal. Stick exclusively with no load stocks otherwise known as drips although you can buy stocks through an internet broker for as low as $8 and the convenience of having all your stocks in one account outweighs the hassle of drips. Don't invest your money all in one place. Beyond stock diversification, consider spreading it out both in vehicle of investment, stocks, funds, bonds, T-bills and with different companies within each vehicle. Keep some money in a savings account for liquid cash when you need it. With investments, the higher the risk, the greater the payoff but also the greater the chance of loss. Always keep some liquid assets around for quick cash when you need it. Don't buy based on tips or rumors or promises of quick, great returns. Stay conservative until you learn what's going on. A bear market is a cycle when the total value of most of the stocks is decreasing. A bull market is a cycle when the total value of all the stocks is increasing. Questions to ask are Is the company or brokerage eager to answer my questions or somewhat aloof? Is the investment product registered with the seconds and slash or my state securities agency? What are the total fees to buy the investment? Are the fees worth it? How liquid is it to cash it in quickly if I want to? What are the risks? How much can I lose? How long has the company been in business? 
What kind of experience do the managers have? Do they make money? How are they compared to the competition? Can they give some references with long-term clients? How do the managers get paid? Do the fund managers make more if they recommend one fund over another or can they give objective advice? Can I get their latest reports? An annual report? How frequently will you get statements? Will you understand them?